Talks on Sudan's 16-month-old civil war and the country's humanitarian crisis begin in Geneva. A group of Sudanese youth meeting in Nairobi has expressed support and hope. From the Kenyan capital Nairobi, Ruben Chama reports. A group called the Sudanese Youth Network called for an immediate ceasefire to be signed in Geneva between Sudan's rival military factions to save millions of lives. Kefaya Ahmed is a member of the Sudanese Youth Network. We wanted to highlight and to talk more about our social media campaign ceasefire now for Sudan and trying to raise our voice to let other people to know what is going on and them to support the Geneva talk and also to pray that two parts of the war to ending the war of Sudan and to go to Geneva and to sit together and try to ending the suffering of the Sudanese and to try to bring the peace of Sudan. Members of the group spoke with journalists today in Nairobi. The United Nations says the humanitarian situation in Sudan is at a catastrophic breaking point as famine and floods add to the challenges millions of people face in the world's largest displacement crisis following 16 months of conflict. Ahmed was optimistic that the Geneva peace process will bring an end to the crisis. We Sudanese expectation maybe this talk will make difference because it is very comprehensive. It is trying to pressure for the two parties of the world to sit together and to negotiate it, including the participation of youth and women as a part of the negotiation of the talk uh, agenda. The United States has invited leaders of the Sudanese Armed Forces and the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces or RSF to discuss establishing a ceasefire. However, the Sudanese army has refused to attend the talks. Mohamed Murkaz is another member of the Sudanese Youth Network. As a Sudanese, we have the right to live. Even the world ignores us. We must not stop knocking on every available door. Murkaz says restrictions on humanitarian access, including impediments imposed by parties to the conflict, have curtailed the ability of aid organizations to save lives. We see that that is an opportunity to stop the war and relieve the immediate suffering of Sudanese people. We call for an immediate ceasefire to be signed to save Sudanese lives. We call for the international support to address the critical humanitarian needs in the country. The conflict has displaced nearly 10 million people across the greater Horn of Africa country and left 26 million facing crisis-level hunger. Robin Chama, VOA News, Nairobi. The Geneva Peace Talks, which the United States has organized, are being held in a secret location for security reasons. Officials have indicated since the Sudanese army is not taking part, the talks will focus on humanitarian access and on achieving local ceasefires to allow in aid. <music> Tanzanian police on Monday night released the leaders of Tanzania's main opposition party, Chadema, along with several members, on bail after holding them for several hours to threat a planned assembly in Mbeya. The party had planned a parade to mark the International Youth Day, but were confronted with a ban after what police described as an illegal assembly. Among those freed were party chairman Freeman Bowie, vice chairman Tundu Lisu, and secretary general John Munika. They had been arrested on arrival in the southern Tanzania city for the event which had been scheduled for Monday. The head of the Tanzania Police Forces Operations and Training Unit, Commissioner Awad Haji, told a late night press in Beya that all Chadema members apprehended in Beya during the past two days had been set free. This includes the party leaders who traveled here from outside the region, most of them from Dar es Salaam. They have been granted police bail and are now in process of being transported back under tight police escort, CP Hajj said without mentioning their names. Lisomunika and 
Chadema Central Committee member Joseph Mbilinyi were arrested on Sunday shortly after arrival in Mbeya for the forum and were joined in a detention by Mbowe and the party's youth wing chairman John Pambaru. The following day after being apprehended at Mbeya's Songwe airport as they touched down from Dar Salaam. The latest confrontation between the party and Tanzania security organs came ahead of nationwide local government elections slated for late October or early November. It followed the ruling CCM party youth wings on event commemorating International Youth Day in Zanzibar on August 10th. However, State authorities opted to crack down on Chadema's similar assembly due to concerns that it might trigger anti-government protests along the lines of the Gen Z youth movement in neighboring Kenya. The police and office of the Registrar of Political Parties both issued a formal bans on the Mbeya event, citing videos posted on social media by the party's youth leaders, which were deemed to be incendiary. In an August 8th letter addressed to the Chadema Secretary General, Assistant Registrar Nyahoza quoted the leaders urging youth nationwide to attend the gathering in order to show that they are as serious as their Kenyan counterparts in carving a new destiny for the country and doing away with state control.